Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am here today with a fairy godmother and what I'm talking about is a fairy godmother of divorce. So my guest today is Nicole Noonan and New York Post uh, actually coined her that label, but she's been featured on Good Morning America, Bloomberg TV, Huffington Post, The Economist, Forbes, Fortune, New York Times, and the list goes on and on. She's an experienced divorce attorney who stepped away from practicing and founded New Chapter Capital, Inc. And for over a decade, Nicole has been revolutionizing the practice of matrimonial law and divorce finance. She is committed and dedicated to advocating for the protection of women and their rights. So we're going to talk about all of these things today. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, thank you so much. I love being here. So you were a lawyer for how long before you walked away from it all? Uh, Let's see. I started practicing back in 2006 and started this uh, about six years later. And I really saw it was, you know, during the housing crisis, um, saw a need for an alternative for people going through a divorce. Um, rather than just having credit cards or going to friends and family. And a lot of times that wasn't an alternative. There had to be something else out there. So back in 2012 is when I started divorce funding in the U.S. And what exactly is divorce funding? Because right before we came on, I had said this is kind of a new concept to me and I um, I haven't heard of it. So I am so curious and so interested as to what it is and how it can really help people through the process of divorce. Yeah, that really is our biggest hurdle is for people to know that we're out there to help um, individuals going through a divorce to level the legal playing fields by funding. Uh, we provide funding for legal fees as well as expert costs. So those forensic accountants, those private eyes you may need, as well as for, for certain clients, reasonable living expenses. A lot of times it's very hard to get that interim support, especially right now with everything going on, the court's going to be very backlogged for quite some time, as you know, and getting in there and making that application to the court to get that interim um, living expenses is not always that easy and it costs money to get there. So uh, for what we do is we make an advance against the client's potential settlement and that way they're able to go out and retain people like yourself, great experts, great attorneys, and have the reasonable living expenses as well. We try to take the stress out of the divorce. And when you were a lawyer, did you see a need for this? And is that why you you set this up? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I uh, practiced in an area where I grew up. So I had my mother's friends, uh, friends of the family coming into my office, mostly women who had given up their careers to raise a family. And when it came time to divorce, they didn't have any uh, credit history of their own. They would have to go to friends or family for the money, but that's not always an easy ask. And sometimes you just, you can't ask. So they would have no ability to retain our, our, our firm to represent them, no ability to retain the right forensic accountants to find those hidden assets or even to support themselves during divorce. So a lot of times they were backed into taking a settlement less than what they're entitled to which just wasn't right. And I saw that there had to be something else out there. And this divorce funding had been very popular in the UK and Australia. And pretty much every um, law firm has used divorce funding in the UK and uh, an Australia divorce firm. Um, and I said, wow, why isn't it over in the US? And there was really no, no reason. It just no one had, had thought of it. No one had brought it over. And that's what I've done since 2012. Are you the only one doing this? Is there anyone else? Oh, and you're, you don't have to plug their names because they're not here, <laughs> but right. I'm just curious. No, actually, um, I started working with um, an Australian company that came over here, um, knew that this could be more national, wanted to run it on my own, uh, wanted it to be a woman's run company and started, got my own funding um, and actually put that company out of business, the former company that I worked for. So there are mm-hmm. people that try to do this. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are people that try to do this, but it's not easy because you could really lose your shirt if your your underwriting is not properly done, if you're funding divorces that um, are are never going to to settle or you're funding more than what you should be funding. So it really is, it's a, um, a, a unique formula. And I think people have a hard time actually putting this together. And that's why we've been at New Chapter Capital 
uh, so successful as we've really fine-tuned everything. And you said something that I just want to back up and take a moment and talk about because I think it's so important is that often um, someone will be faced with, they continue the fight through trial, which is so expensive, or they settle. And sometimes settlement is the best option, but sometimes it's not. And sometimes you have these cases where um, in order for things to play out justly and to be fair, you really have to go to trial because they're, the parties are just so far apart. But people end up um, kind of just giving up because they've run out of money and their lawyers are saying, trial is going to be really expensive and trial is so expensive and that's overwhelming. And so you're saying that you, what you do is you provide that option and put it on the table. So someone doesn't necessarily have to make that choice and that they can continue on um, and not worry about that piece of it. Right. Absolutely. From, from the attorney's perspective, um, if a client has to go to trial, they realize, yes, it is going to cost their time, their associates time, their paralegals time, and making copies. Everything is going to be more expensive once you go to trial. So if they don't have the money for them to, to provide for their overhead, uh, it's difficult for a firm to go to trial. And a lot of times you do, you do have to go. If one side is not being forthcoming with discovery, it really, it has to go to trial. Not every case, but there are cases out there that, you know, unfortunately uh, are going to end up going to trial. And this is a tool for those clients that, that need to, to do that, to need to go to trial. And so that's also, like you said, if someone feels like a spouse is hiding money um, and they're not disclosing all of their assets and, and in, in, for someone who's listening who isn't quite familiar with the jargon, um, that's often when attorneys bring experts in. We might bring a forensic accountant in to look at someone who owns a small business and they're, not, um, they're, they're hiding money in the business or um, an expert to value a business. Um, you know, and those things are so expensive or in the custody side, if a psych evaluation needs to happen, I mean, these things cost money. Courts don't fund them. And if the person doesn't have the money, then it just doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, a lot of times what we find if an attorney recommends a forensic accountant and we're able to provide funding for that forensic accountant, it, it pays for itself, really, because the forensic accountant finds hidden assets. Um, we've had client after client that their, their spouses, their hiding money on an overseas account that otherwise they would not know anything about had it not been for the forensic accountant evaluation. So what is the minimal amount that someone can borrow and what's the maximum amount? So we really have um, no minimum, no maximum in terms of, you know, each client is an individual. Um, does it make sense for someone in a short-term marriage that doesn't have any assets to be, you know, throwing good money after bad? No. So I wouldn't suggest um, someone in that situation. But if there, there's a house that's going to be divided, um, perhaps a, a custody issue, uh, bank accounts, retirements, something that, you know, at the end of the day, they want to get a, a piece of what they're entitled to, funding would, would be an option for them. And so what does the funding process look like? We're trying to make it as simple and streamlined as possible because we, we already realize that divorce is stressful. So what we do, we'll provide an application to the firm that's representing the client. It's simple, straightforward. What we're looking for is what the marital asset pool is. So um, any documentation that supports that, whether it's a real estate appraisal or bank accounts, also mortgage statements, things of that nature, come into us. We do ask for a credit check um, for, for clients, but we get it. A lot of our clients do not have great credit history because they never built up any credit history of their own. And especially during divorce, a lot of people's credit gets it just destroyed because they have to take out things on credit cards. Um, from there, once the client is approved, documents are sent for the client to review. We do ask the client to review with independent legal counsel. So it does not need to be a matrimonial attorney, but would need to be an attorney that's practicing in that state. Documents are then sent back to us. The whole process can be done in as little as two weeks. Wow. And then the money is deposited into their bank account? The money is actually going to the law firm. Ah, okay. So that prevents someone from taking that and booking like a vacation to Hawaii. Right. <laughs> okay. Which sounds great right now, but you know, <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, we, we've always uh, sent the wire the money to the firm's accounts. And do you deny applications too? Are there people who are just are not a good fit for what you offer? 
Yeah, I mean, certainly we've, we've um, there, are, there are red flags um, out there. If um, someone doesn't have any assets, then certainly they shouldn't, like I said, throw good money after bad. Um, you know, we also vet the attorneys as well. Um, you know, there are certain attorneys that um, for what reason or another, we've, we've refused to, to work with. Um, so <laughs> I, can't, like I wonder it. why. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any bad attorneys in this profession. Never, never, never. <laughs> Never met any. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, so in terms of paying it back, uh, how does that happen? What if someone doesn't get that settlement that they were anticipating? Well, then we have done something wrong in our underwriting. And that's where I think companies that try to replicate this lose their shirts because their underwriting is not proper. Um, in terms of a, a straightforward case, once it comes to settlement. So typically it's a house is being sold, we'll get repaid at the sale of the house or someone's buying someone else out of their portion of the company or there's a cash payment, uh, that's when we get repaid. Unlike a credit card where you have to make monthly payments, nothing has to be repaid until you get to settlement. Oh, interesting. So if the case carries on for two or three years, then you're waiting that long until that, that, that loan's getting paid back. I will better us than the firm because I've been at law firms where we'll be waiting for cases to settle. And then once they settle, we're still getting, waiting to get repaid. And that's not, that's not great business for the firm as well. So. No. And I think that that also, some attorneys will not work as hard. Um, and it, you know, and it, it's, no one's going to ever admit that, but if there's a large debt that's owed and you're going to trial and there's more money that needs to be put out, if there's a huge bill sitting out there, um, you know, some of the, some attorneys may not put in as much effort too. So, you know, it's always, um, I think it's always important that, that the financial piece of having representation and being able to pay for it. And you're looking at that. You don't just hire a lawyer and then, and then wipe your hands of it and say, okay, now, you know, it's not my problem anymore. Yeah. I mean, you have to be evaluating through every step of the process. No, absolutely. Absolutely. If you get your house painted, you're going to pay that house painter. If you get um, work done in your car, you're going to pay the auto body shop. A lot of people right. are lackadaisical when it comes to paying their divorce attorney. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and it's true. And, you know, it, it's sort of a, kind of an unpopular or, or touchy subject. And I know that like, I'll have listeners who are probably listening and, and it's, um, and maybe they're in that same situation and there's a bill that it's outstanding, but it is true. And lawyers have to pay for rent and their overhead and all of that too. So it becomes, um, it does become a piece of the case. Um, and I think that it's just it's so interesting that there's an option out there because this is new to me. I have not heard of this. Um, and so I think it's, it's really interesting because I think what it does is it gives the client the power to make a decision because they want to make the decision that way and not because they're being held to not having the money to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we say. We empower that individual to go ahead and, and, Know, get the settlement they're entitled to and not be backed yeah. into a corner and say, Hey, this is all I'm going to give you, babe. No, we're going to, yep. you know, get there, get, level that playing field and give them, empower them with, with funding. So is, I imagine it's like a mortgage is an interest rate that's attached to that. There's a, a monthly fee on whatever's taken out. So you could be approved for a hundred thousand dollars and only need fifty thousand dollars as a fee just on that that 50 and you may never need that extra money but six months from now things are escalating you know this is going to go to trial you may need that so and, and so so yep so now my lawyer um hat is on because i'm interested if you handed the money to me as a lawyer how are you tracking or knowing that the money is being used just for this purpose? Is there, um, or the lawyer's not giving the money back to the client to do what they want with, or is the lawyer like their accountant in this? Well, what we ask for the attorney to make a determination, you know, this, there's no crystal balls when it comes to a divorce, but you know, if this case is a $10,000 case, a hundred thousand dollar case or a million dollar case thereabouts. Um, so once you, make an assessment of what you're going to need for the next six months and you agree with your client because your client's going to see the application and sign off on it as well. Um, you then say, okay, I need a hundred thousand dollars for the next six months. We may need an additional $10,000, you know, month seven, but we may not need that. That money is just for the legal fees. The client may ask for 
you know, additional $30,000 or $3,000, whatever it is. It does go through the firm to make that payment to the client, but it is delineated. This is the money for the client. This is the money for the firm. And it's not something where people often ask, are we checking the monthly billing statements? Mm. Not. I mean, that's between you and your client. But what we do is we, when we first make, you make the application and with our underwriting's perspective, we want to make sure that the legal fees are paid first and foremost and expert fees. Living expenses for certain clients are available for certain clients. They're not. It just depends on how much the divorce is. And we try to adjust that with the firm and the underwriters to make that determination. And what about the person who says, my husband should be paying all of my legal fees. I should not take on this financial burden. Um, Why do I need you? Sure. I mean, that does happen where at the end of the day, the husband ends up or the moneyed spouse ends up repaying us. Um, sometimes you're you're waiting for that spouse to uh, make that payment, so or or to be ordered. There's no you know actual you know hard and fast rule that because the spouse has more money they should be paying for your legal fees. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen. A lot of times it does. It just depends on, on the case. Oh, interesting. So you can lend to anyone in the country. You're in New York, but you are not specific to just your state. Correct. We, so we funded throughout the country, um, California, Florida, Texas, Iowa, and we've funded really in, in pretty much every state. Okay. So I'm super curious. What is the most amount that, of money that you've lended out for any particular case? It, it's in the millions and um, I can't say anything more but it is it's a it's a very interesting case with some high profile people um that many of your listeners would know the name if i said it but i'm not going to (laughs) no you can't do that (laughs) interesting um so what have been some of the most successful outcomes that you've seen oh i love to get the thank you notes i actually get more thank you notes now than i did when i was practicing um just people are are so happy that they were able to to get to settlement that they now have um you know their, their war chest behind them, that they're able to go and take this and say, hey, you know what, you have to come even to a mediation and make a fair offer. And I love when they take the money, they take the funds, either go back to school, start their own business. We had a gal um, maybe two years ago that had always wanted to go and start her own jewelry line. And after her settlement, she was able to go move with her, her kids start her own in-house jewelry line, was able to work from home, and she makes beautiful, beautiful items. I also have a a client that went back to law school after uh, her divorce, so I think that that's amazing, and she wants to get involved in matrimonial law someday. Wow, that's impressive, because usually the response is the complete opposite, and you hear people say, (laughs) why why would you ever want to do that? (laughs) Right, right. well, I kind of, I said to her, are you sure about this? And she was sure, so I'm I'm happy for her. That's amazing. So how, how did you get involved in this? And I went from, I mean, that's a big leap from practicing law to actually doing something like this. So was there like a light bulb moment where you said, um, there's, you know, something has to happen and I have to, um, you know, I have to help. Yeah. So it was really the firm I was working for. Um, we'd have, our partners would have fights all the time because we were carrying such huge, huge accounts receivables. And we just saw there was no end in sight. And we were either refusing clients or we were um, carrying clients' costs, which wasn't good business. So I said, wow, there has to be something else out there. And I heard about this in the UK and Australia. And from there, you know, I've been building this business ever since. That's amazing. And how many people are employed? Now. So we keep it very small. Um, it's, you know, really myself, a couple of salespeople. And, you know, from there, we, um, we have a back office, we have our underwriters, and you know, we have our investors, most importantly. <laughs> That's incredible. So um, I, I'm going to ask you a question that I frequently am asked, and I just want your take on it because um, you've been in the trenches and now you do this work, so you've sort of seen it from all angles. Um, And I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but how does someone know when it's time to file? You know, it's, it's difficult to say, but in your gut, it's that little voice that says to you, all right, I've had enough. It's time to move on. And you can take no more than you know. 
you know, don't make a rush decision about it. Definitely sleep on it. But when you wake up in that morning and you say, I've had enough. Yeah. That's yeah. When you yeah. And, you know, I always tell people to, to, when they, when they turn off all of the outside voices too, and stop listening to everyone else's opinion and start to listen to their own is when they can really tap into what it is that they want. And usually when they're asking that question, they already know the answer. They're Absolutely. looking for someone just to say, yes, it's okay. It's okay to do this. Right. 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 So the divorce statistics are up thanks to the pandemic. Have you seen an uptick in business as well? Absolutely. I mean, I get calls. I got calls on Thanksgiving. I've gotten calls, you know, every major holiday. Um, I get calls, you know, Sunday night late, Saturday morning early. People are, are just being forced to, to live with someone that maybe their relationship was at a breaking point and now it's broken. And it really it makes it you know, especially difficult right now with the courts are so backlogged. Yeah. Um, what, what, what are people going to do? So, um, which I think why funding is so important for people to know about right now as an option. If you do need to go and try to rent an apartment, try to move out uh, during a divorce, you know, we, we could be an option for, for that client. And so what does someone do? What's the first thing that they do if they're interested in this as um, an option for them? So I would check out our website, um, www.newchaptercapital.com, uh, or give us a call at 212-404-7807. Or, you know, you can also uh, Google us, which is um, newchaptercapital.com, but either ask your attorney about it. If your attorney doesn't know, I'm happy to speak with your attorney. I'm also happy to speak with, with you as an individual, as a client, and we have a lot of great resources, a lot of great uh, attorneys that we can point you to as well. You know, sometimes I am the first phone call and people say, you know, what do I do? Where do I go? And depending on um, their current situation and, you know, what we like to give them a list of different attorneys, different options for them to, to visit. But certainly um, we're available for other resources, not just funding, but to be real, real helpline during divorce. And it, you, you really are a fairy godmother of divorce. I mean, I can see why you were labeled that because it, I mean, it's just, you're giving a gift of being able to make an empowered decision, not because you're being forced to, because, but because it's the right decision for you. So, I mean, that's incredible, especially when someone's going through a divorce and so much is out of control. This is a piece that someone can kind of take that control back. Absolutely. And empower them. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Nicole. I will drop all of your contact info in the show notes as well. I am absolutely fascinated and I'm going to keep your number handy for sure. Perfect. Thank you so much.